to the Nerd Effect News Show. We are in episode number 23. My name is Dustin Vancouver, and I am joined by my fellow nerd anchors. Wait, 23? You sure? Yeah, 23. Okay. Well, this is Michael Morgan. <laughs> I think you just made that up. No, man. I swear to God, I'm on 23. I went and looked at it before we started. <laughs> okay. And if I'm still on... Yeah, we're on 23. Motherfucker, how dare you get me all confused and discombobulated. <laughs> Win. And I'm Verna Vendetta, filling in for Nikki Prindle. Yay! Yay! Mason couldn't be here with us today because he's uh, stuck at retail hell doing uh, inventory. Anybody who's ever worked retail and had to do inventory before, I salute you. It's not pretty. Yeah. With Nikki and Mason gone, I have to work double hard to get you shit. You know? It's true. It's true. I got my work cut out for me. Mike actually might speak today, which is going to be a rarity. Now who's giving who shit, son? Yeah. <laughs> um, so many of you may have noticed the new voice in the room. We have uh, Miss Verna Vendetta with us today. Uh, she's in all the way from the great state of Indiana. Technically a Boise native. It's true. Um, but uh, she's a friend of Nikki's and a fr- and uh, been a long time uh, listener of this fine podcast. I believe I'm your self-proclaimed number one fan. Self-proclaimed, yes. I don't know. You may have to punch Brian in the head. Of course, we haven't heard from Brian on yeah. the show. I was worried for a while, but when was the last? Out. Brian was on this show at one point, but ever since then, I don't think we've heard from him. Good, I win. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know. Nikki. I killed him. What about? Oh, Nikki became a part of the show. Yeah, Nikki was the number Off one fan. She was the number she one fan. She kept getting name dropped, and yeah. Eventually, they just earned her a spot. Yeah, I live too far good. away. Hmm. My cousin Jake couldn't uh, couldn't do the show much anymore, so hmm. we had he opted out, and we brought on Nikki, Yay, which is nice because that that uh, that relieved the sausage fest <laughs> <laughs> of this show. Um, so on that note, uh, how have you guys been, Mike? How you, how's your week? Uh, retail hell, yeah. Retail hell, yeah, yeah. Doing a new job in the retail business. Uh, you got a new job? Can't say where I'm working because you know can't. But yeah, yeah. I've been cashiering. Nice. Uh, it yeah, it pays the bills. Is it better than pay better than the other jobs you had? Or? Eh, nah. It's just work. Mm-hmm. Keeping an eye out for something a little better paying, but you know, hey, what can you do? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Got to pay the rent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least you don't have to deal with people in the holiday season now. Wait a minute, I take that back. Retail hell. Yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I get to look forward to Black Friday. Mm-mm-mm. You know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> depending on the day, like when I was working for Radio Shack, I actually kind of liked Black Friday. I didn't really, uh, I didn't mind it as much. The only part I didn't like was having to get up at balls thirty in the morning to go yeah. do it. But uh, it goes by really fast. It does. Usually, you had to work a split shift. Like you'd have to come in work from like six to noon, and then come back from like three to nine or something like that. It just okay, that's it is ridiculous. Cool. But uh, well, you were a supervisor there, right? Yeah, I was a store manager. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, of course, on Black Friday, as a manager, I take that back. You don't leave. You're there for the whole, <laughs> the whole party. <laughs> so, yeah. Libby. I mean, Verna. <laughs> I need to wear a name tag, don't yes, I? Yes, you do. <laughs> Put it right on your forehead. I almost brought one, then I forgot it. Sorry, I may have it's spoiled the spoiled the uh, surprise. But uh, um, how's your trip here so far? Um, I just got done with Maid of Honor Hell, so I'm hoping it's going to be better for the next two days that I'm here. Yay! I noticed mm-hmm. you and your brother were. Uh, Oh in a yes. nerf combat. That was awesome. The, the I was not allowed to have nerf guns as a kid. And Why? he has like 
eight of them and so we just went crazy it was so cool we built like walls in his room out of these weird cardboard brick things and just had an all-out war for about an hour nice <laughs> you see the new uh oh we can't remember what they're like nerf assault guns or something like that but they're uh um they're new nerf guns that they just released that are aimed more towards an adult audience where they actually fire the, the little foam balls at it like 50 60 miles an hour oh which nice. is like insane they're like fully automatic oh, and run on batteries and just <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. it's yeah these were just the little suction cup dart thingies but right. i'm glad i had uh, those safety goggles on because my brother got me right in the eye and I it su- suctioned to the glasses it was awesome <laughs> so that wasn't just for effect that was no. like he honestly hit you in the face with- we had all these rules about you know if you get shot in the arm you can't use that arm anymore so i'd shot him in both arms and he used his feet to pick up his little pistol dart gun thing and shot with his toe and it got me right in the eye and just boom headshot yeah so i told him to freeze so that we could sort of document it um because the thing stuck to my glasses for like five minutes it was so cool (laughs) best nerf war ever that's pretty epic to have just like yeah so we shoot you in the face with their feet yep yeah he won we we played like two (laughs) rounds or whatever but he definitely won both times. Nice. I think I let him win that second one just because that was such an epic shot, and I was really tired and sweaty and gross, and I needed to come here and be slightly less gross. I don't know. You take a shot to the face, that's pretty much an instant win. <laughs> for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, for him. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, he wins. I think he just wanted to keep playing, so he wasn't trying to win, but... I had to go do important things, like be on this podcast. Goddamn right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks. <laughs> Boom. Um, to Nikki, uh, we love, hate you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just jealous of the fact that you're at Salt Lake Comic Con right now. Actually, you may be back, I think, by this point. I don't remember if she comes back on Monday or not. but I think she's... I don't know. We're supposed to meet tomorrow afternoon. And all she said was that she needed some time to rest. So Oh, that's right. She took Monday off because she needed re- recovery time. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I'll that makes that. sense. So, I guess I won't see her tomorrow then. But uh I will. Yeah, but we saw you first. Ha. Ha. But uh um yeah, she's in Salt Lake Comic Con right now. Uh jerk. she got a hug Felicia Day. Double jerk. <sighs> I'm going to take over the doodling portion of this podcast tonight and draw a picture of her and her new girlfriend, Felicia Day, and then I'm going to give it to her. Do it. <laughs> I want to see the final product by the time you're done. I will do it. Because it's going to be gonna awesome. Be, it's going to be really good. I'm a really good artist. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly even better than Nikki. I can't tell. And Nikki's really good. I can't tell if there's sarcasm behind that or not. I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out what it's done. You'll find out. Of course, what is art other than just one's own personal interpretation of what's on the paper? And I interpret that I am awesome, so it's going to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who weren't here, she gave us the sassy black lady I head did. shake. That was did indeed. pretty good. Yep, it was good. Yep. I can't. I can't seem to detach my neck from my shoulders were, to do that. So it it's doesn't... a belly dancer thing. Yeah, there were muscles oh, my, and yeah, joints okay. working there that I don't think the average human body has. No. Yeah, belly dancing and yoga are pretty much your only options for being able to... <laughs> and just being sassy. And just being you gotta sassy. you got to work on that. It's a sassy power. It has nothing to do with, <laughs> nothing to do with flexibility. Just no. the more sass you have, the more mm-hmm. ability you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just shake my head back and forth. It doesn't look <laughs> that effective. That looks really good. Just... There you go. You got it. The, what's that? The, <laughs> where you make your head look like it's being tossed around by your shoulders. Break dancing? Michael Jackson, I think, did it a lot. Yes. yes. I don't know how to do that. So we have news. <laughs> kind of. I hope so. Libby's news is... Verna's news. <laughs> There's going to be a whole lot of that tonight, and I apologize ahead of time. You I've, only ever known, I've only ever known you as that, so... You don't even know me. I you don't, don't know me. I, I do, just not the other you. <laughs> That's too bad. She has multiple personality disorder, we're finding out tonight. <laughs> she starts twitching. It's not a disorder when you call it an alter ego. So kind of like 
Bruce Wayne and Batman type yeah. thing. Exactly. So friend is the superhero. Yes. The other one's the mild mannered individual. <laughs> yes, slightly yes. more so, I guess. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. I'll take your word for it. Um. Okay, so we usually do a little uh, rock paper scissors before we get the news going. Whoever uh, wins out on top usually ends up going first, but technically they have choice. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. It's going to get really fucking crazy in here. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, so that's between you and me. Ready? Go. Ha! Don't make me go first. You know what the most amazing thing about that is? It's an audio podcast. Nobody knows what we did. Mm Mm-hmm. That's kind of the running joke. I won paper or scissors beats paper. In case you're wondering. Boom. Uh, I'll go first. Even though I'm not really entirely prepared for the things I have to say. Because I just found it like five minutes before the show started. When are you ever prepared? (laughs) When I have time, Mike. When I have time. Okay? I have a full fucking time job. I have school. And I run this podcast. God damn it. And you're doing a magnificent job of it. Thank you. (laughs) That means so much. (laughs) So please be glad that I have news in front of me to actually report to you. But, uh, okay. And thank you for complimenting. You're supposed to be giving me shit, Mike. You're not supposed to be complimenting me. I'm already falling back on my job. All right. All right. Uh, Way to fuck up this podcast, Mike. God damn it. Compliment your mom's face. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. As long as it's not my mom's boobs, then we're okay. <laughs> no, this place is I want to go. <sighs> yeah. Got my eye on you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this one comes from modvive.com. So apparently YouTube uh, is experimenting with a subscription model, um, which right off the bat I can tell you is just meh. But uh, I guess it just depends on how heavy you are on YouTube. It's actually, actually kind of funny because Lib- Verna and I were... Uh, see, I caught it. Uh, we were just talking out in the parking lot before the show about uh, the YouTube generation of kids that are out there uh, in regards to watching their favorite YouTubers on on the internet, such as PewDiePie. <laughs> that name just makes me want to yeah. punch a koala. <laughs> It's a minus six to punch him in the dick. <laughs> More Throwing on it that back. Later. Actually, that's an old joke. But th- but double damage because of her what she's going to report to us. All right. Yeah. I'll allow. <laughs> You'll allow. <laughs> I'll let this motion pass. <laughs> um. So, so <laughs> here we are. Uh, I'm just going to start reading this, and then we'll kind of discuss. So it says, let's start off by saying one thing. YouTube and Google are businesses. A business's goal is to strictly make money. That is the only goal. Anything else is merely a solution to a problem that rises from the question of how do we make more money? Correct? Yes. For example, Verna, you want to make more money, I'm guessing, doing your sewing stuff. I don't do sewing stuff. I do belly dancing stuff. Okay, well, let's do this. How do you think you could make more money doing belly ba- belly dancing stuff? Uh, probably being better with the whole technology thing would help out a lot. I'm okay. Not, I'm not so good with that. So how would you come up with a solution to fix that problem? Try to be really nice to somebody who does understand the technology stuff so they could help me out. Mm-hmm. Or learn it yourself. Or no. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> or hire somebody to do it for you. Yeah, hire a social media manager. Or. But that costs more money. Depends on what you pay them in. Okay. Good point. Feed them lunch. I mean, if you got a friend who's savvy in that, I'm sure they'll do it for, you know, beer and pizza or whatever. Right? No. Yeah. Was there a point? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I was just discussing the the essence of what business is. Hmm. Okay. So I, I just putting it on a on a on a tier no, that was get associated, money. like the one that you could associate with. And you know how many billions did they make off of Gungan time? Okay. Well, let me put yeah. it this way: <laughs> if 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 Nerd Effect became more business oriented, how would we want to go about making more money on this podcast? 
advertisers, sponsors. Mm, yep, yep. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes. Which is kind of where this is going. Uh, the long way around. Yeah, the long way around. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it says there's... There is no real other question in the world of business that matters, only solutions, and this brings up the subscription feature that YouTube is looking to launch. Uh, the subscription feature is expected to cost in the range of $10 to cover two services. The first service is YouTube's recently beta-launched YouTube Music Key, and the second is an ad-free viewing experience for YouTube itself. Up front, this looks pretty tame, pretty, uh, pretty expected in all honesty, but there are some underlying issues that many people don't realize. For starters, why would anyone pay YouTube for music? True. Uh, according to the Music Key homepage, you'll probably have an ad-free version. Music will keep playing in the background on your phone. You won't need an internet connection as the new app will most likely download them on your first listen, and you'll have access to Google Play Music. Right away, we can't tell what all is going to be a part of the subscription or if the subscription alone is what you need to access it, but let us, let's just talk about the first little bit the ad free part Pandora internet radio which provides music free of charge with the occasional advertisement is just like any real radio but if you pay a subscription you get unlimited song skips and ad free listening best part is it's only five bucks a month beyond Pandora is a nifty little site called Spotify which is my usual go to which is weird I go to Spotify if I'm listening on my PC but I'll go to Pandora if I'm listening on my phone because the Spotify uh the Spotify randomizer is really fucked up. It doesn't seem to really get what you're trying to do. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Uh, much like Pandora, you can browse music, play it, and occasionally listen to an ad. Spotify's subscription cost is right up there in the $10 market, and you can get the standard ad-free listening, but you also get the ability to listen to tracks offline. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so between Pandora and Spotify alone, both of which have been on the market for a while now, why would anyone switch to YouTube Music Key? Furthermore, what about places like iTunes Music Store, where you can buy a song for just 99 cents and keep it for life without the fear of losing it because you ran out of subscription time? Uh, da -da -da. Enough about YouTube Music Key, though. It only happens to be half of the value you get of a monthly subscription that they are asking for. The other half comes from a form of supposedly ad-free viewing when watching YouTube videos. In an email sent out to content creators, we learn about a licensing term update. It doesn't look pretty in all reality. There's a whole thing here that I won't read. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to read the email, just go to the post on our site. Uh, this was an email sent out by the YouTube by YouTube to the content owners. What I would like to do is pick this apart and help explain what part about YouTube being a business. For years, YouTube fans have been telling us, oh, so this is a quote from the email. Uh, for years, YouTube fans have been telling us what they want, telling us they want more, more choice when watching their favorite content, more ways to support their favorite creators, and above all, the option to watch their favorite videos uninterrupted. To give fans more choice, to be launching a new ads-free version of YouTube available to fans for a monthly fee. Uh, for starters, every and so now that was the quote. Uh, for starters, everyone wants more choices, so that part by itself is highly believable. But in what world does a paid subscription to YouTube allow us more choices in our favorite content? Okay, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Does it satisfy the need to find more ways to support your favorite creators? Absolutely. But does a channel subscription feature instead of a site-wide one? How do I, as a viewer, know that my subscription money is going to my favorite content creator? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. How do I know YouTube isn't going to pocket it? I'd much rather pay a small fee on a per-user basis. Let me, let me choose the channels to sign up for and get ad-free viewing on those with a portion going directly to them rather than a lump sum going directly to YouTube. On top of that, what do they mean by watching the videos uninterrupted? Don't viewers already pretty much do that? I don't remember the last time I watched a YouTube watched a video and couldn't watch it the whole way through without being stopped. Next up, I'll take a few snippets. Enough. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you're gonna take a picture of that, I hope. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay. For those of you who uh, 
can't see, which is all of you. Uh, uh, yes, that's Verna that the very much <laughs> kindly put a name tag or right square on her forehead so that I can remember what to call her in the future of this show. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. It's, it makes complete sense. I'll take a picture just for you. I'll be honest. The rest of this thing's kind of long. But that's what she said. <laughs> Oh, Libby with the first one out the door. Where the fuck were we, Mike? What, what happened there? What does my there? name tag say? What I... Did I say it? <laughs> I wasn't... <laughs> I just did something bad to my microphone, you guys. That's what she said. No. No. God damn it. All right. Uh-oh. Did I ruin it? No, nope, you're okay. good. You're good. Um. Selfie fail. <laughs> Um, so anyway, the fact that YouTube is doing a uh, a subscription fee thing just doesn't make much sense to me. Like, especially as long as YouTube's been around and you already have other subscription free based ad or subscription services. I mean, it just seems kind of derp to me at this point for YouTube to even do that. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, just. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, YouTube, you're watching, you know, uh, content from people who have uploaded to it. You watch, you know, a lot of music and the like on there. But, I mean, still, the, a lot of the uh, subscription-based services, people are looking for, like, you know, TV, movies, you know, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Crunchyroll, stuff like that. YouTube does have that, though, for, like, you know, three or four bucks you can rent a movie on YouTube. Okay. Well, that's a feature I haven't heard of. So. <laughs> I think it's all done through the Google Play Store. Yeah. But, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. It would be through the Play Store then. Um, okay, yeah, that's right, because it's all Google. <laughs> yeah, because if you go on YouTube and, like, Google Cinderella, it'll pop up with, like, the Disney Cinderella, and you can rent it right on YouTube for $4. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Well, I didn't know it played through YouTube. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense, actually. All right. So, uh, uh, still, I mean, trying to get into a model just like, basically, yeah, just like Hulu, um, it just really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and it's just everybody's used to just playing it and watching it for free anyway. So I don't think it's really, you know, going to have much of an impact uh, as far as, you know, if they do get subscribers. And then also there is the concerns about, well, if subscribers are going to get this type of uh, non-advertisement uh, availability, does that mean that the ads are going to increase? And, you know, how's that going to affect uh, the people who don't subscribe in the future? My question is, too, is how many of the advertisements does it relinquish does it relinquish all the video advertisements or is it like the banners and everything else gets taken out too <laughs> exactly yeah I, for a subscription they damn well better be taking out the banners and the ads the video ads and everything mm. yeah um plus it would I, I i would certainly hope they wouldn't but i could see them setting it up so that after every certain time stamp then it comes up with an ad um so even if you're right smack in the middle of a video you're watching, you know, some instructional thing, a music video, what have you, then all of a sudden you got an advertisement pop up and interrupt what you're viewing. Which on a, you know, something like Hulu, when you're watching for free, you expect it. On uh, YouTube, it's just, it's just really not appropriate for the content. Well, and with YouTube, too, at least you have the option to skip the ad after like five seconds, too. Well, Usually, yeah. generally, if it's mm-hmm. a, if it's yeah, it, it, the, if the ad's a short one, then it won't let you skip. But mm-hmm. yeah, Libby, how do you? I mean, Verna, how do you feel about? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of torn, I guess, because as a YouTube viewer, I of course hate ads, but as someone who has videos on YouTube, I would super like to have more money for people watching those videos, if that's how it works. So, you know. That would be nice. The payout on a YouTube video is so minuscule, it's not even funny. It's like, cool. it is ridiculously small. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you you, you, potent- you basically have to have at least, like, just 
thousands upon thousands of viewers in order to even make like a decent like I would say wage I guess off YouTube. I have a lot of but, viewers and subscribers and such, but I don't think enough to benefit from it. I don't know. It's do you, hard to explain. Um, the troupe that I'm in, Different Drummer Belly Dancers, we have our own YouTube channel, and we have like 90,000, I don't know, subscribers or whatever, but I'm not really sure if all of those people actually watch the videos, you know what I mean? And does your troupe uh, opt in on the advertisements? I think so. I don't know. You don't know? I'll have to check. I'm not the one in charge of it. Oh. Yeah. Because that I would be a good way to make a few extra bucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I think most of so. the ones that do it, like, try and do it professionally, like, they're full-time, is they're getting hundreds of thousands of viewers. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a shotgun yeah. And that's technique. per video, right? Oh, yeah, and they get per video, and then they get per views, and, well, it's, yeah, per views of video. Okay. Basically. The thing is, once you're a content creator, you better be doing it full time. Like the minute you become even remotely a name, like the minute you start doing it full time, that's when you'll start making money. Because basically, your videos don't stop making money. Eventually, in people, even if it's a video from a year ago, chances are people are still going back to watch that video mm -hmm. uh, at some point in time. So the more video and the more content you have out there, that shotgun effect, it just exponentially keeps growing over time because people will just keep watching your old stuff on top of your new stuff. It's it's crazy. It's nuts. Like, there's these people. My daughter, I'm going to put this out there right now. My daughter, and we've talked about this on the show before, watches these stupid, she's almost four, these stupid videos of people just opening Disney toys or My Little Pony toys or that's all it is. They're just opening toys and playing with them, like the the blind boxes and the blind bags, and everything's like My Little Pony themed, or the or the uh, the vinyl pop figures, or it's just stuff like that. That's all they're doing is opening boxes, and it's like a 10, 15 minute video of them just talking about the toys. And I mean, there's one of them that she watches that actually has some at least some slight production value. The Disney to uh, DCTC Disney Channel toy collector or something like that just you can youtube dctc it'll all pop up i'm sure but these guys at least put some effort into their videos and make them look nice but there's this one lady that she just goes by uh uh i think she's just oh she's just called disney toy collector and she's like this i don't know like a little polynesian lady or i'm not sure what she is but she's never on camera like you never see her face she's usually behind the camera playing with toys with her hands in view of the camera and this lady has, like, a multitude of subscribers, and rumor has it, and there was a magazine article on it or a blog on it, but this lady apparently makes, like, $2 million a year. That's all she does. It's just plays with these stupid fucking toys. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying the toys are stupid, but that's all she does. The, the actual value of the videos is not there. They're not even shot well. Like, it is horribly shot. And her accent makes it even harder to watch. Because it's it's just so you can't understand what she's saying ninety percent of the time. That makes me want to cry. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we, my wife and I make fun of her because she opens up every single video. With, hey guys, <laughs> hey guys. I think that's how we should and, open this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Nerd Effect Podcast. <laughs> oh, it's just horrible, and her nails are always elaborately done in some Disney theme, like. Like, there was one where her thumb was nothing but looked like a giant Mickey Mouse head. You That's... said your daughter is watching these? Yes. Or you are watching these? I'm watching them by association because somehow she ended up on Teen Mom one day on YouTube because of the correlation with what she was watching. It's weird. But, yeah, somehow, like, a, somebody, it, was like it was like somebody had their camera pointed at the TV recording Teen Mom. Like, that's what the video that came up next on her feed. So, yeah, I had to kind of watch what she's doing. Luckily, they have a YouTube Kids app now on, like, on that you can download. It's nothing but, you know, stuff that passes oh, good. YouTube's hmm. content filter. So, uh, yeah. So, thankfully, there's some, it's all kid safe stuff. So, yeah, those guys make ridiculous amounts of money opening toys it's so not cool no it's not <laughs> it's not anyway that's my grape nah. 
ad free advertising. The thing is that Google is so much so known for innovating stuff. We're buying into things that could help change the future. The fact that they're actually focusing their time and their effort on trying to create an ad free YouTube is just seems like a waste of their fucking time to me. But there's so much more else Google could be doing than just trying to create an ad free. Whatever, Google. Mike, what's your news? <laughs> that was a good segue. Uh, <laughs> no segue there. There's no segues in this show. Because segues are hard. Oh, yeah. Pardon me, I'm going to grab my soda. You're, what? He's leaving. Oh, over there. I'm Damn, back. Dad. I just had to stretch out for a minute. It's okay, Mike. So... Since I don't have a segue, I guess I'll just talk about computing, because you know computers and stuff. So hey, Google to computers is pretty, pretty smooth segue. That wasn't smooth by any stretch of the imagination. No, <laughs> mostly because it got segued from a rant on stupid YouTube videos. I okay. liked it though, the rant and throwing things down. Whatever, Google. So <laughs> let me drop something random that. Probably nobody but Mason would even understand their get here. So, what are you saying, Mike? You call me stupid? Von yes. Neumann bottleneck. Let me sink in. I know what a bottleneck mm, is. Nope, totally off. Okay. So, uh, do you know what a Von Neumann bottleneck I is? I was thinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience, are you? <laughs> so. In computing, mm -hmm. you have several different components that all work together, da 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 So you got processors, and you try and make the processor faster and faster and faster to process stuff faster. Oh, this is what we talked and about last time, too, right? Where a little you bit, can yeah. only get so far in electronic components before they start to cap out. Mm, yeah. Like the 3.4 gigahertz like, is about as high as you can go without overclocking it. Type right, of thing. right, right, right. Okay. So um, another bottleneck is in data storage. So... Uh, you know, your hard drive, basically. Mm -hmm. So no matter how fast the processor you get, eventually you hit a point where the hard drive cannot read and write the access, the information, um, any faster. So the, no matter how much faster you get the processor speed, your computer performance does not change. You're, basically, your computer can only perform as its best component. Exactly. Um, so that's what the Bon Newman bottleneck is, is yeah. that point where the data access is capped off and you can't access it any faster because of the limitations of the hardware. Right. So what some researchers have done is they've made a breakthrough in basically using light to store data. So I suppose you're going to tell us how that works, Mike? Uh, that would be fantastic. Well, the basics of what they got down here. Now, see... Uh, what they're doing is they're using a material similar to what they use for uh, rewritable CDs and DVDs. So when it's, uh, as they describe it, when you use lighter photons, transfer data, um, they're basically bombarding a section. And uh, depending on how they bombard it, it either makes a crystalline or uniform uh, configuration in the material. So like kind of crystallizes and forms up even, or it randomizes and breaks up. So based on whether or not it's uniform or random is how you store the data. So you got zeros and ones that way just by using the light. So in theory, what they'll be able to do is have just light um, being used on the storage media rather than having to use an electromagnetic uh, type of media. So, so instead of you're basically or using magnetic tape. Yeah, so you're basically you're just using photons to read and write the hard drive. Your hardware would last a hell of a lot longer based on that too, I imagine. Yeah. Um, one possible limitation on it is the data storage. Uh, Time frame may not be as long as what you can do with like a hard drive nowadays. Um, it's a not really clear exactly. Um, they were talking like, you know, you'd have a good decade of data storage. But uh, potentially, so you're saying your, your dad, could, 
your yeah, data from, would just deteriorate over time. Yeah, from what I was reading in the article, it sounds like it was is something that would deteriorate over time. So you'd probably want to use it in tandem with a yeah. So this would like be something. Drive. Yeah, so this would be something that you know just for high speed access and uh, you know obviously this is not something that's going to be available in the next uh, few years anyway. But um, yeah, and the idea there is basically just high speed data access to correspond with higher speed processors, which they don't have the processors that high speed anyway yet. This is just kind of more of a long-term future technology. Yeah. How do you feel about photon-based data storage? Well, you know the thing about photons. No, oh, this stuff is way over my head. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening and trying to absorb... Yeah, I'll read a quote from the article. So, um, this is a completely new kind of functionality using proven existing materials. Uh, these optical bits can be written with frequencies up to 1 gigahertz and could provide huge bandwidth. This is the kind of ultra-fast data storage that a modern computing needs. So. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> but... Well, I mean, it sounds good to me. It, anything yeah. that uses light is definitely, I mean, I, I think it's kind of weird about the, the the data deterioration portion of it. So they're actually still storing it on physical media. So what? It's, a, so like how I do you said, store light? the article, it's more of the, they're talking more about the experiments they did and not how it would actually implement into a working computer. Um, but basically, it's the type of material they use for rewritable CDs. So, um, yeah, and, and the basic way they described this working is uh, you hit it with a photon to crystallize it and make it a structured surface, and then you hit it with a photon to randomize it and make it a scattered surface. And then it would be able to tell at what bit it's uh, random or structured. So you're using lasers to read a disk? Effectively, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it's kind of like just a – from yeah, actually – that's a good way to put it. It's so kind of basically year old like a hard drive <laughs> made out of rewritable CDs. <laughs> kind of thing. So welcome to technology from 30 years ago. You think they would have? Yeah. Well, it's a, it, it would be a new implementation. Implementation. I, implement. Yeah. Mason's not here to correct me, so you got to do it. You know. Oh, I'll be more than glad to correct you. Yeah. I'm sure you would. Uh. So yay tech. Um. I guess I'll bring up the other one too. Do it so I can fucking okay. rant about it as hard as I did. Because you know beats. he needs more reason to rant. He does. <sighs> I just wish everybody my, could see you guys you heard like making eyes at each other in this podcast. It's been really good. <laughs> Chemistry. <laughs> have you? Have you? Did you hear my beats rant the last time? Did we, I don't remember. Dude. Is it the one you just uploaded and then gave me shit for not seeing it because you did it while I was like driving over here? No, no, no. <laughs> this was a uh, um, uh, was a couple months back. Yeah, it was. I'm sure I did then. Bad. But yeah, there was a the the Beats by Dre headphones. Yes, I remember that. Fucking worthless pieces of shit. Oh, sorry. Are we recording? No. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, Doctor. So Dre, uh, but you sponsored the wrong fucking headphones. <laughs> Duh. Sorry. Continue. So Apple is. Looking like they're gonna make every headset that's currently available on the market obsolete because they're douchebags mm-hmm. and it does nothing to save anybody anytime anywhere. Mm-hmm. Sorry, continue. So, uh, Apple has filed a patent for a new uh, headset jack. It's basically the same size as current headset jacks, but it's got a side cut out of it, so it's like a D shape. And it's not even... It's there's still no even... different technology than what all the current headsets are using. Um, it's just a different shape, and it fits in one way, and, oh, hey, those headsets you have already won't work with it. All because they shaved, like, literally a millimeter off the side of the... Mm-hmm. Headphone jack. Yep. <sighs> so much hate. What is wrong with people? <laughs> like, it hurts me just even hearing this because it's like, 
Oh, everything we've ever Apple's used. Apple's king of proprietary, though. <clears throat> Just they got to have everything different. A- Apple so and Sony, Sony are the fucking them. worst offenders when it comes to proprietaryism. And just everything they want to do is just for them. It, it, it's weird. Like, they got the diagram of the headf- headphone jack. Like, imagine a headphone jack here, like this right here. So imagine taking this right here and just shaving the side off of that about a millimeter. And that would Why? basically be what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it's worthless. It's the stupidest idea I've ever seen. And they put a patent out on it. <laughs> yep. That's really fucked up. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just like, um, and they're not even going to be doing it with a standard headphone jack size. They want to do it with the two point five millimeter headset jack, mm-hmm. not even the three and a half. Not the three and a half. A three and a half is like what you would see on a normal headphone, like the smaller, like you'd plug it into your CD or CD player. Jesus Christ, listen to hold I am. Uh, into like your MP3 player, or your iPhone, or whatever your current iPhone. Uh, but hey, Walkman <clears throat> that thing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. I had one of those. I had the mm-hmm. yellow sport one. I like I'll remember one. those. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, with automatic automatic reverse on it, so you just it would play to the other end of the tape, and then just play it again, oh, but going backwards. Those were the best. Those They're fucking, so fancy. Oh. Remember my little red one I had? I thought a little. Yeah, I just had you had the the left button and the right button. It wasn't even forward or backwards, and then you hit both of them to switch it to the other way. Yeah. Yep. You, yep. Didn't you have to flip the tape? You just fucking just click, 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 poof, play it the other way. We are sold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so the three and a half millimeter jack is basically the one that you use currently on pretty much every portable device. Uh, there was a small stint there in the early two thousands where uh, the two and a half millimeter jack became a thing because phones were still relatively small because they were flip phones. Mm-hmm. I had a Sam- I, like I had a Samsung A nine twenty, which I don't know if anybody doesn't know what that is, but. Uh, it was a sweet little blue phone, had stereo speakers on the side of it, and it was like the first phone that really had like any sort of expansion on it. It actually had the capability of slapping a, a micro SD card into it so you could listen to MP3s on it. Um, but it had the two and a half millimeter jack, which is, I mean, imagine your regular headphone jack, just slightly smaller. But you know, if you wanted to use your regular headphones on it, you had to buy the buy a like a little two or three dollar adapter mm-hmm. to listen with your regular headphones, which I didn't care. Anyway, basically that's what they're trying to get you to do now. Great. So you can pay Apple another 10 bucks for their stupid fucking adapter so you can use your regular headphones on their shitty iPad. So because it's patented, there's no way anybody can really do a knockoff design of that little adapter <sighs> thing? No, they'll either have to pay Apple to make it happen or... Yeah, that's it, right. Yeah, even the adapters, they'd, they'd all be through Apple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Apple's making all the money. I'm going to have to throw away my iPhones. iPhone now. This is terrible. There's a reason we have Androids. <laughs> yeah. And there's a reason we give shit for Nikki for having an iPhone. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> not cool. Yeah, I'm just not. When it comes to people trying to make proprietary shit, like this almost seems like they're just trying to offend people. Like they're not even trying to make their own proprietary headphone jack. They're taking something that exists and shaving the side off of it. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all they're doing. And the way they're designing that, that headset will probably work in other devices. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it would, huh? Mm-hmm. All it's got to do is clip in because that's how, what the end of it is, is, just the clip portion of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I bet they had a good laugh at that one when they came up with it. They did. Like, we're going to make so much money. <laughs> Be smart, people. Please, just don't, don't buy into Apple's bullshit. I know they have a good music service, and I know they have a decent store, but that's not worth throwing your integrity for hardware away. Mm-hmm. God damn it! <laughs> it hurts me so much. It hurts me so much. Like I can't even you look can, at this diagram without getting angry. You can see really him physically right pained right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's ever worked for the last, this jack right here, the one I just showed you, that's been around since what the forties, fifties, at least, at least, and just I mean, and it hasn't failed anybody yet. It still works really well. I hope that wasn't one we needed. <laughs> no, this is actually the output from the computer. So, 
Oh, we don't okay. actually use it for anything really until it's like, hey, our show went silent there for a second. No, no, awesome. no that's what I wouldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> okay, I was um, watching that in terror. <laughs> and there goes the show. Oh shit. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Urge to kill rising. <laughs> so you had a news story, right? I have more like science corner or whatever it is that we make fun of. I think. Yay. Mason is normally the one that does the science corner. Oh my god, I just keep punching this mic. Yeah, usually we have Mason's anthropology corner. Yes. And uh and uh We'll do yeah, biology so. corner. Biology corner? Yeah. Let's, okay. let's hear it. Um because you guys seem to be so obsessed with koala penises for some reason. Um Only cuz you brought it up. I really didn't though. Okay, I might have done it before the show. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm secretly obsessed with them. So I, it's kind of has like a story leading up to it. Is there time for me to tell this little story? Maybe. That's why we're here. Okay. Yep. So I have a 12-year-old brother who is awesome. And uh, we were playing a totally innocent game of Apples to Apples Jr. This was like a year ago at this point. And he misread a card that said pride or proud i don't remember which one as proed and so we're like well what is proed and he's like i don't know i think it's some kind of dolphin penis or something and so from then on proed became like this huge inside joke and it's now the the definition for dolphin penis even though it's not really um and so we brought this up again since i'm here visiting him this year um i only get to see him once a year which sucks but you know we make the best of it and we uh, were ta- he was talking about this is always his fault. He was talking about uh, whale penises being called a dork, and everybody knows this. And so then he wants to know, you know, well, what is a dolphin penis really called? Obviously, it can't possibly be a prode. So he googles it, and it turns out that it is also called a dork. So then he wanted to know the name of all the other kinds of animal penises out there. So he wanted to know the name of a koala penis. Just couldn't be so, called a penis. We had to look it up, and it turns out that it is just, in fact, called a penis, but that the penis is bifurcated. You guys know what that means? Does anybody know what this means? I'm going to have to pull up my article so that I can I accurately describe. <laughs> Which I'm kind of ashamed of. He knows. He knows that's, what's up. That's why I said uh, double damage he earlier. Knows what's up. Oh, my God. Okay. So... I got this off a website I was really afraid to click on, but it's called... <laughs> That's how every good article should start. <laughs> it's called Top 10 Penises. <laughs> and it's a website. Are you going to go through the, the entire of top 10? Softpedia. I will not. And I'm not sure if this was written by someone who is not great with English and grammar or if maybe it was translated from another language because it's really difficult to read. Can we go through um, the top 10? Possibly. I don't have. The actual website pulled up. This is just a picture I took of it. Um, Back to bifurcated. Bifurcated penises are found in the most primitive living mammals. Monotremes, which include platypus and echidna, and marsupials. Opossums, Tasmanian devils, a lot of these words I don't know. Quolls, bilbies, bandicoots, koala, wombats, wallabies, potaroos. So Australian mammals. Gliders and others. Pretty much everything in Australia has a bifurcated penis. Amongst marsupials, only the two largest species of kangaroos are destitute of this peculiar trait. The bifurcated penises are formed by two distinct columns, and so the penis has two ends. And to get more, this is the quote from the website, and to get more, the echidna has a four-headed penis. I don't know why it has to say and to get more. No wonder knuckles so is so frustrated. So it's basically all the time. forked, which <laughs> is hilarious. Um, let's see. So back to the koalas in particular. Um, I found this off of Wikipedia as well. Because the peculiar penis's anatomy in males corresponds to an odd female genital anatomy, the marsupial females do not only have two uteruses which are partially or totally fused in evolved mammals, but two vaginas also! Exclamation point. In some species, the vaginas may be partially joined, but never lose their identity. And I don't know what Australia. identity means there. But uh, <clears throat> that's what I found out through 
the Google searches of different animal penises. Is it penises or penis? I don't know. That sounds kind of weird. And he's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you knew what bifurcated was. He does. <sighs> hey, I deal with single penises only. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for a fee. Yeah. And I don't have the top ten. Um, it was kind of. I mean, if you look at the website, do you remember the ones I, that some of the ones that were on the list? I do remember that cephalopods were on there because their penises are detachable, mm-hmm. like a lizard tail or something. Or yes, yeah, it's like <sighs> starfish, I think, or octopuses. Yes, okay, squids and such. Mm-hmm. Squid talk. Okay, yes, yes, I saw that somewhere. They just detach during mating, or? They can, and I don't totally know, because this was not the most sciencey of websites that I could have found. <laughs> and I didn't want to dig too far, because a lot of scary websites kept coming up in my search for the top ten penises. But um, it was, we wanted to know. My brother needed needs to know, so we need to do some research on this. Like, why do they detach, and do they grow back, or do they fuse back on afterward? Or are they just gone forever? These are things every young man should know. We need to know. And no matter what list you're looking at, Ron Jeremy's always number one. <laughs> Not on <this>. oh. <laughs> I did read something about, because of its size, the barnacle actually has the biggest penis. Oh, like per, like... Yes. What is it? That, like per mass. I was going to say per capita, but that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, based on its mass... Penis to mass ratio. I like this Boy. math. This is fun math. <laughs> well, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, in case you were wondering about koala penises, you now know. You dork. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it back. All right. How's our time? Uh, good. I think. We're good. Okay. We could talk about so many more penises, you guys. Yeah, we're almost mm-hmm. at an hour. You, that's what we're going to talk about is penises for the rest of the show. It's pretty much every show, but penises I, or I, monkey tits or yeah, dude. Okay. So Ron Jeremy's a guy. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> did you ever see that? Did you guys ever see his biography? Like the what was it? Oh, uh, the yeah. like the true and tragic tale of Ron Jeremy. Like how he started as a. He he was like a math teacher before he got into porn, and he's got like horrible narcolepsy, like it's scary narcolepsy. Like he there's the well, they were doing the biography with him, and he's like driving down the highway, and he's just in his car doing this, just nodding off, and he would like slap his chest to like try and stay awake during his drive. It was insane. Like as the cameraman, I'd be like. I'm dying today, right? That's that's what's happening. Like, yeah, he's just a, he's a super cool guy. Like he's like you would never know in his everyday life if you didn't know who he was. You would never know he was any different than anybody else. That's weird. He's just led a really crazy life. So anyway, I highly recommend it. Go find it. It's a great video. There's nothing really super adulty about it, other than. Uh, you know, kind of like the cutaway scenes, but they either, I think, blurred or just show portions of what's going on. It's only like that. But it's mostly just the story of his life and how he ended up where he was. That sounds interesting. I'll uh, get to that after I finally watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Go right from the Doctor <laughs> to Ron Jeremy. How about Ron Jeremy as the next Doctor? Oh, dear oh, Lord. God. Just Come on! Like, what in your pants? <laughs> Where's your sonic screwdriver? Hold on! No, <laughs> mm. He opens up his pants and starts making the screwdriver sound. I'm just imagining the regeneration on that one. Oh, horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible, horrible. Out of my head. Get out. No. It's oh. there forever now. Ah. The show was classy at one point, right? This is. It was never classy. You outed me as Libby like right off the bat. Definitely not professional, that's for sure. <laughs> this is the most unprofessional podcast I've ever been a part of. It's You're not welcome. true at all. <laughs> Mine was way worse. 
My cats were always falling off of stuff and ruining everything. <laughs> is it still available? Like, can people still download it anywhere? Um, it was called Multicraftual, <clears throat> and it was about crafting and shenanigans. Cats. How did you guys record your show? Like, just on a phone or? Um, no, it was my friend and I used our laptops, and we called in on Skype mm, mm-hmm. and had some type of thing that was supposed to record it, and it didn't always work so it became a huge hassle and then my friend got like a real job like a nine-to-fiver so it was it became impossible to mesh schedules that's why we do this thing on a sunday and usually record two shows at once so we can edit one for the current week and one for the next week trickery Mm. (laughs) welcome to behind the curtain of nerd effect (laughs) Uh, so that one yes okay so, Did you find it? Yeah. Yeah, just go Google Multicraftural. It pops up. And let's see. Multicraftural.wordpress.com. WordPress. Wor- WordPress. <laughs> I'm sure it's <laughs> super out of date from the last post or whatever, but. Oh, I don't, yep, there you are. If the videos are still available. <laughs> some of them are on YouTube, some of them are on WordPress. They are kind of all over the place because we started to have issues with our technology. Looks like oh. you guys got up to number 70, at least on here. Wow, did we really? Yeah. Number 70 of what? Just says... 70 podcasts? Uh, blogisode 70. Yes, blogisode. I forgot about that. This podcast thing, like, she introduced me to podcasts. I had no idea what they were, and I could never think of what they were called. And so I thought they were called blogisodes. So we just, every episode was called a blogisode of our podcast. That makes sense, though, because considering what everything's like a version of a blog, so you got vlog, blog. Why not a blog episode? I thought it made sense. (laughs) Blogio, like for for audio. So now we can go watch them all. Yeah, and you can watch us do really bad (laughs) karaoke at the end of every episode. Nope. So you guys did it video Skyping? We did. Yeah, it's video. Interesting. Oh, Mike's going to show me. See? Oh, yeah, uh, look at that. Okay. Very cool. I'm all over the internet. You don't even know. I'm internet famous, bitch. <laughs> no. But, uh, I would have money if I was internet famous. I don't know. We still get... I, it's Considering how like small our podcast is, I'm still amazed at how many people actually come up to us at cons and be like, I've heard of you guys. That's mm. awesome. Like, we usually get, like, two or three people every con that we go to. It's like, I've heard of you guys, or I know who you are. I had my first official fangirl <clears throat> at Indiana Toy and Comic Expo recently. It was so awesome. She was so cute. She was so excited to meet me. <laughs> I never had that before. <laughs> Not like that, anyway. She was all dressed up cute and had, like, a baby Groot with her and was, like, squealing excited that she knew who I was. So it was cute. I liked oh. it. Oh, I hope man. everyone is nice like her. Wait, you hope everyone is nice? Yeah, I hope that if I have other, like, fan people, they're actually nice and not people who like to be douchebags to you for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I, it's kind of, I basically, I actually somehow, in one of my classes recently, I had somehow fit in jo- uh, um, Will Wheaton's Don't Be a Dick <laughs> so, uh, as a... Mm. Because we were talking, we were talking. Because the class, the one class I'm doing at CWI right now is one of their, uh, one of their required classes that you have to take. It's kind of like, basically, it's an introduction to learning class. But you can kind of, you can do uh, on multiple topics. Like there's post-apocalyptic, there's heroes and villains, there's like video game development, or the video game industry and stuff like that. That you can all kind of pick a different topic to go with. I kind of signed up late, and the only ones that were available were uh, the heroes and villains, which I feel like I could do fairly easily. Um, and then, uh, which is the one I'm doing, and then I can't remember what the other one was. But uh, the class is really fun, and I knew it was going to be very, one of those uh, one of those gray area type classes, like what makes a hero, what makes a villain, or, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, well, it's all really open to interpretation when you boil down to it. <clears throat> basically, you're the ultimate sociopath is basically what makes up the best villains, it might be. Mm-hmm. But uh, somehow I, I, I brought up the... The don't be a dick thing. Oh, and the uh, 
the quote from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, be excellent to each other. No. It's like my life yes. motto. It's awesome. But those worked their way into my into my one of my class things. I'm hoping I get a good grade and a special note from the teacher on those. I hope so. Me too. That's awesome. Anyway. So we should probably wrap this one up. Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, thank you, Verna, for hanging out on our new show. We'll see you here in a second on the uh, <gasps> normal show. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, for the Nerd Effect News Show, we have been... Michael Morgan. Verna Vendetta. And I have been Dustin Vancouver. And we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>